Yeah, I, um, I, I had a, uh, a lot of opportunities as a youngster to draw, and I painted a little, but not mm -hmm. much. I, um, I did mostly drawing, mm -hmm. and um, when I went into the seminary, I uh, went to art school for in summer, in the summertime, and then I developed uh, some programs. I was in Detroit, Michigan. I went to Notre Dame in the summer school. And when we, when we came down to Dayton, Ohio, I went to Dayton Art Institute, mm -hmm. uh, again, in the evenings. After I was ordained a priest in 72, I went into um, uh, DAA up at, uh, <clears throat> it was that now, UC, yeah. at UC. So I was in the um, graphic arts, graphic design section for two years. and um, But then, uh, I uh, got involved with a community here called New Jerusalem Community and became very much involved, so I left school. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I, uh, uh, I didn't do any work art for about 30 years. <clears throat> I was in Europe for about 20 years, and I came back and uh, I t made a sabbatical year where I put in some art classes mm -hmm. and painting. and. Um, out of that, I realized that that's what I really would love to do. I, I want to do that, something like yourself. You know? yeah. You've got one career, but you really would like to develop another part that's been hidden. Yeah. So I um, uh, took car classes, talked to my community, and um, the idea would be that I would continue preaching as a main apostle, but that I should also develop this, this chance of uh, art. Mm -hmm. What I did is I, I took the paintings that I had done during the sabbatical, mm -hmm. but I also took stuff that I had done 30, 40 years ago, <coughs> and I put together a show. <coughs> and I, well, you see the studio, mm -hmm. and I had an open house and about a year, year, year ago in November. And um, <coughs> it's the first time I really put artwork up for sale. And, I was surprised at, uh, that I did well. Uh, now, my style has changed a lot over the years, uh, but I, um, I'm comfortable in the different media that I've used. I, mm -hmm. I usually mostly do silk screen, mm -hmm. uh, wood blocks, wood cuts, uh, draw a lot of drawings. Um, I've not done any painting. Really, uh, the, the, in the sabbatical, I did tempera painting, mm -hmm. just tempera on papers, and um, I enjoyed that very much. And I very much would like to go into oil painting. I, I like did a one week in acrylic, and <coughs> it's interesting. I probably could, I could probably grow to like it, but uh, I would pr think I would prefer to work with oils. Mm -hmm. um, now the. Uh, the problem is, is that I have these two, <coughs> these two jobs, and the one job for the preaching is taking up more of the time. I, I need to do it because of the money. I need mm -hmm. to do that so that I can make money to support the other things. Mm -hmm. um, I have to um, help support the community I'm in, um, and it's not just a matter of being away preaching. But it's a lot of correspondence, coordinating dates, doing airplane reservations, yeah. <coughs> checking out outlines, materials for different talks, etc. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so as a result, the art is is there. It's secure, but it's it's not getting the energy I want to give it, mm. and um, it doesn't get the time. So I'm trying to find a way over the next year. Uh, to create more time in 2014, and then by 2015, I'd like to do mostly art and little, uh, uh, less rather, less preaching. I have done years ago. I did some commission work for some of our printing houses, Saint mm -hmm. Anthony Messenger. Yeah. And uh, so I illustrated some books. I've done some books for the Franciscans. Um, But the only time I've really put my work out there for sale was in the works was in the, the exhibit about uh, a year ago. 
I sold quite a bit of th a number of things, so I'm kind of like I've used up my my supply. So I need you now to really get some new work done. My initial reason for wanting to contact you and talk about art is the fact that you are playing these dual roles mm -hmm. of ministering, preaching, yeah. and art. And I mean. I feel so called to do that as well mm -hmm. in, in whatever capacity God calls me mm -hmm. to do that. And so what I struggle with in this public setting of school is how do I marry those two together? This wanting to do fine art and wanting to do, wanting to be true to who I am when such a big part of that is my faith and spirituality. Um, so I guess if you could talk about, you know, just how does your spirituality, how does your kind of preaching life play into your art making? Or does it, or mm -hmm. should it, or kind of go off from that if you can? Well, I think that it, it automatically and unconsciously uh, flow together. Um, because they both are expressions of an inner life that I'm not always aware of. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't try, I don't paint or don't do religious art. I don't uh, try to make nice, well, I guess and sometimes I'll do an icon or mm -hmm. um, something a little more traditional in a way. Um, In the, in the work that I'm doing recently in some what are called retreat workshops, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the main sense is that uh, the God spirit, however you refer to this spirit, you know, from whatever your tradition is, most people believe that there is something larger than us outside of ourselves, something that is creative, something that is invisible, something that has effect on, on within creation. Um, I, I choose and I, I choose to believe that there is a God who, who is the who is creator, who who loves to imagine, who loves to um, design to Just to create, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> because we've been made in the image and likeness of God, we also enjoy creating. Whether it's other people or whether it's something that we make with our hands or our mind and music, or whether it's movement and dance, whatever it is that we. We find a lot of pleasure in expressing ourselves. It comes very easily and naturally to most nations, most peoples. And um, so I feel that whenever you are creating, you're part of a creative process, you're moving into that invisible world of, of the spirit. And the spirit is working through you. you know, the spirit, you know, uh, would like to do certain things, most likely. But the spirit also respects our uh, desires, our skill, our judgments, so that you can be creative with the spirit going through you. And um, you can <clears throat> let the spirit go, or you can constrict it. You can say, you're not supposed to go over here, you can't do that, you cannot use these colors, I don't like that shape or whatever. And the spirit will cooperate. I don't think the spirit, God's spirit, tells us that we are, comes into us and tells us we should paint a religious painting. I don't think so. Um, I think that's our projection, our judgment, our need to, mm -hmm. to do something, or, or anything, anything mm -hmm. that we, we have to be careful that, um, of how much we're trying to control of the operation. Uh, we have to, we're, we're intimately involved in it, but we have to be careful that we're not um, 
trying to control the movement. Now, you need to have discipline. Discipline is very helpful. Uh, the image I've used for the creative process and how it's different with different people is um, trusting that the Spirit of God is what's moving and, and doing the creating. Um, when the it's like the wind. When the wind goes through a forest, it makes a different makes different sounds according to what it comes up against and interplays with. So that when the wind is coming up to the forest, it's going through a field of wheat. The wheat makes a particular the wheat and the wind make a particular sound. Mm -hmm. If you take the wheat by itself and just stand it in a vase in your living room, it's not going to make any noise. But when it's in the field and the wind is going through it, that interaction between the two create a sound that is only made by wind and wheat or grass. Now, when it comes up into the woods, it depends on what kinds of trees it encounters. If it's bushes or like wild roses, <clears throat> it, it'll make a particular sound as it rustles through there. If it goes into fir trees, uh, cedar, or cedar make a different sound than great big ponderosa pines. Um, maple trees will make a different sound than magnolia trees. Um, because, because, and it's not that magnolia trees make a certain noise, they don't. Um, they're rather quiet on their own. Mm -hmm. But when the spirit is with them, <laughs> something new happens. And the same thing with us, that um, when, when God's Spirit moves through us in a creative process, uh, it, it's, going to, it's going to pick up part of our interaction with it, and that's what you're going to see. But the thing is, is that the sound in nature is, is not the wind, nor is it the tree. It's something new that was created between the two. And the same thing in a painting or, a, or some movement. Um, it's not mine mm -hmm. because now it has its own existence and <clears throat> and so it's it's an existence that is uh, divine that is uh, that is well that is sacred we'll put it that way maybe not divine but it's sacred because it, it shows the interaction of God the spirit and this human being and so you kind of both step back after and, and kind of say wow <clears throat> That's wonderful, uh, but this, but it is not mine, and it doesn't tell you everything about me, it, because it, now I can project something. I can paint one of my dreams, and or you know my office work, and even put in fingerprints mm -hmm. or something like that. <clears throat> That's nice in a way. It's, it's okay, <clears throat> but it's not really. Um, it's more about me than about the creative process. I think there's a distinction there. And uh, the idea for me is to try to get out of the way as much as possible <clears throat> so that that wind will, will have be free to move through me and make whatever it wants to do. Uh, I, I see painting as a, um, a parable or as a, a paradigm for uh, human life in the spiritual world um, because if you have people coming in to paint I'd like workshops and I'll have people come in to paint initially people expect to make a nice painting a nice they want to do something nice they want something they can show people and they like and they might even sell it um, <clears throat> to get people to step back from that and say forget the thing forget about selling it forget about uh, how it looks just paint whatever comes through you and don't judge it it's a it's a big challenge mm -hmm. um, and I think that the way we approach art the way we approach the creative process is the way we approach life the way we approach the spirit so the process tells me a lot about the artist um, or somebody who's ready to jump in and become very, you know, involved and then kind of loses heart and wants to throw it away. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's very slow and whatever, but then gets into it. Uh, some people will work on it and work in miniature, miniature detail. 
other people will want such big broad strokes and you know something dramatic. <coughs> uh, so um, the rhythm that you you take in the process is also a very personal a statement, and that's where I, I feel that. Uh, Painting can be a religious, spiritual exercise. Uh, that it helps you to see how you interact and how you refuse to interact with God, who is the Spirit. Are you willing to let God to say what God wants? Or do you say to God, I really like things uh, a certain size, certain dimensions, uh, certain volume, certain colors, uh, in a proportion, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. How much are you dictating, and how much are you allowing to come through spontaneously? I I really agree with mm -hmm. so much of that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I mean, that's probably the biggest reason I decided to go into art mm -hmm. um, and struggling just as as you to make art a bigger part of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's just that's such a big struggle. Uh, mm -hmm. I think for most artists too, just to like, mm -hmm. how do I do what I feel that is the best for me, best for my mentality, best for just life in general? Um, but then, how do you you make yeah. the dough? Um, so I really like how you're already working on bringing those two sides together with these retreats yeah. and then helping others to yeah. really yeah. kind of figure out, you know, this, mm -hmm. this need for creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've come across so many people who have said, I'm not creative, mm -hmm. that I couldn't draw, I couldn't draw, yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. And, and I, I, I just have to tell them like, I mean, drawing in an accurate manner is, is one thing that's, if you, want to invest in that, but there's mm -hmm. so many things you do every day that are creative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, That's right. And just learning that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we Respect. have to... Yeah, <coughs> yeah, and not yeah, judging it, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very hard for us because we're so conditioned to judge everything. Right. To evaluate. Oh, see as a good, yeah. useless, useful... Um, yeah. In your workshops, have you, have you had, like, people come in and we've had like a, a moment where someone just kind of it clicked for them and they're like, I'm a creative, I'm an artist, or like you were saying, someone who just is like, whoa, I did not know I had these kind of suppressed emotions. Where are these coming from? Well, it's that you, you find a lot of different things. I've found people who come in and because it's a, because I'm a priest and it's, a, yeah. it's in a religious context on the retreat, they expect to come in and paint last suppers and mm -hmm some of the Eucharist or the Virgin Mary and the child. Mm -hmm. um, they try to move them away from that, but they always kind of gravitate back to it because it's safe and, and it's good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, then there are some who have, uh, a lot of people have a hard time breaking through some of the resistance. And, and you get to a point and you say, I think I'm through, I'm through. Well, they're, they're disgusted with it, they're bored, they're frightened. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's always a, a very uh, graced moment because that means you've come up against this, you know, the, this, the, uh, your energy and God's energy want to move, mm -hmm. but there's something that is resisting it in you. And so if you stop them, mm -hmm. it's gone. It, it just dissipates. Whereas if you can kind of push through it, and, and then boom, something new happens in the mm -hmm. painting, in the work. I find that very true, and and part of the art making process, it is about the struggle. Yeah. It really, I mean. Yeah. It's almost like, um, I mean, at least for me, I feel like at some point I'm going to feel challenged, and I'm going to want to give up, mm -hmm. and it's up to me to, you know, kind of struggle with that, mm -hmm. um, and see what can come out of it. But I, you know, there's something. You know, that voice that sits mm -hmm. in the back of your head that says, eh, keep going. Don't give it, up. Yeah, yeah, don't give up, you know. And I think that's also going along with what you're talking about, of how you interact with life. Yeah, there's something, there is, there's a big distinction between finishing something yeah. and giving up on something. Right. 
Right. <clears throat> Finishing means you move through the, the obstacles. Mm -hmm. And you will know you are finished in a gut reaction. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other, it's more of a head response. Right. Right. And, and basically, it's a judgment that I'm bored, I'm tired, I hate it, I don't right. like it. I have no other ideas, I'm nothing else creative, I'm stopping now. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't mean you're finished, it just means you're quitting. Yeah. And that is very hard. Yeah. That's the hardest thing, which is also an important life lesson to learn. Process, or as you completed it, uh -huh. I mean, which we do in life. Yeah. It just, I know I do. Um, but then kind of stepping back and going, well, it doesn't look exactly how I wished, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's still good, you know, or it's still, it still feels right. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I think that's a, a huge part. It's interesting, like I'll tell people when they're painting, is like, paint, paint this painting as though you'll never show it to another person in your life. No one else has to see it. No one else will ever see it. So you have, the, you can paint whatever you want, however you want, any color you want, mm -hmm. because no one is ever going to see it or judge it or appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Tell you you're stupid, okay. or you have a filthy mind, or, right. or whatever. You know. Right. Wow. Yeah. And when you can paint like that, yeah, then it's and then the wind really blows. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about this, the studio space that you have here. Is this, um, I mean, it seems like this is probably a, a separate space from your, like, living. Oh, yeah. The yeah, I have three yeah. worlds. Yeah. I have a, a studio upstairs, mm -hmm. the office upstairs, the house where I live over by the market, and mm -hmm. this. Um, I was very fortunate in being able to uh, have this space mm -hmm. because I met, I met a woman who she and her husband managed these properties mm -hmm. for a real, for a, an owner, the mm -hmm. owner. And um, I had their wedding 30 years ago. Oh. So <laughs> they, had, they, they were happy to have me here, so they gave me a very good price, very good rent. And then I had some inheritance money that I used to fix the place up. So now I've got a, a class A workspace. Yeah. It's gorgeous, it's very well equipped. Uh, there's a full basement yet. This is just part of it. And um, this area I use more for work, and I've got two people coming in for a painting group. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so this is a work area. The front room out there, I'm going to be using that more as a gallery. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I, I opened up the basement, put a stairwell in, and opened up the basement. So the basement is also a workspace. The front is going to be a permanent art gallery. And then I'm going to rent a small uh, storefront right next door. So that's all kind of connected. And um, that uh, that room will be just like a double this space, and it'll only be for painting mm. class, for workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll keep everything out and make a mess and whatever you want to do. You can't. I can't do that in the front room because it's, you know, that's too nice. And, uh, and I'm... Uh, I'm just too compulsively neat, and so if I can, um, uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to exhibit my stuff, and I also want to exhibit the friar stuff. And mm -hmm. What I would like to do is to have a uh, little organization uh, that I could have, let's say, once a month, a different friar would show something. I have some guys who do photography, some are painting. Mm -hmm. um, there's about six, seven people I could get, and then myself on top. Mm -hmm. We could have an evening of poetry reading with Marie Bodo, you know, one of our friars. Mm -hmm. um, I would like it to be a friars, a Franciscan studio for people in the neighborhood or in the city. Uh, they could see us doing something other than celebrating Mass. Um, but you have an interesting background because you've got a business background. Mm -hmm. This is what I need, is mm -hmm. that I need, what I'm going to need is a, uh, uh, I, I need some business uh, assistance mm -hmm. to do promotion, to mm -hmm. plan, you know, say, okay, there's these galleries, uh, you should show over at this place, 
And you should get your, your notice of your show over there and also in the Cincinnati mm -hmm. newspaper here or this community paper. Um, you should send out this, the, the, an advertisement for the workshops and it, here's a mailing list that we go to. Um, so <clears throat> marketing is a, <clears throat> is a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I find you can become paralyzed without it and you, you produce something but nobody's going to see it or you spend all your time marketing and you don't have time to do some original stuff yeah and that's where I'm feeling a big bind right now because I only have about a quarter of the time a fifth of the time that I dedicate to art mm -hmm. uh, I've got everything ready mm -hmm. I've got all the stuff I've got the space I just don't have the time mm -hmm. And, um, and I may have two hours here or an hour and a half there, but it's not enough. You need the big blocks of time. Not when you get going. Yeah. 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 So that's, um, I'm fortunate because I live with the Franciscan community and they help absorb some of the bigger expenses. Mm -hmm. They will pay for the rent. Um, <coughs> so I don't have to shut down because I can't sell stuff and pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I have like that type of family backup uh, that uh, I don't have to worry about the, the rent right now. Mm -hmm. I don't do any, I've done a few things for commission, but I'm not really too eager to do that. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to be able to do is just do a number, get a build, build up a portfolio that I could exhibit and sell. Mm -hmm. you know, that would be fun. So you were talking about the other friars and even about nature. Um, which I know is a huge thing with St. Francis yeah. and Franciscans. Um, I'm just wondering, is that maybe some proponent that kind of drove you to that order, maybe? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah I came to the Friars because of Francis, because of his stories, um, the romantic stories yeah. about him. Uh, and, and the more I'm here with him, um, I see how how wonderfully uh, up to date he is and ahead of us even yeah. <clears throat> with environment and and his respect for all creation and then there's been some great Franciscan teachers uh, in history uh, who have taken that thinking and uh, have taken his experience and reflected on it mm -hmm. in their time. St. Bonaventure and another John Dun Scotus in Scotland and England, France, in 1300. Mm -hmm. And uh, really a magnificent brain who did a wonderful creative thing. So that uh, beauty is the, is the surest pathway to God. Uh, that God is, God is one creative, intelligent, powerful, reasonable. It's a, but most the most beautiful description of God is beauty itself. Mm -hmm. God is all beauty. God loves beauty.